Hey guys, welcome back to another how-to video. Today I want to cover um, an automated darkroom spawning system. Uh, spin around here. This is a system that we set up in my uh, friend's base, uh, Kerm Martian. <clears throat> and he's one, of course, that has to have... Oh boy, was not expecting a creeper. We, we should uh, take care of that. <clears throat> there we go. Anyway, let me see if I can't throw some light down. Get that problem taken care of. Anyway, he is one that has to have a lot of redstone-y things. And honestly, can't really blame him. I do love the redstone as well. He has this iron farm sitting up here. And as you can see, a really, really long way down to the next section. Um... We decided that we would make this point all the way down to that flooring there be the darkroom spawner. So we are going to take a real quick peek into here. Here we go. As you can see, this is the inside of the darkroom spawner running off of a hopper piston timer. The principle of the uh, whole thing is the fact that you have um, observers and dispensers. This here is also a dispenser, but it's empty. That way it triggers the observer, which triggers the dispenser, which triggers the observer, and so on and so forth, all the way down here. And, yeah, I thought we could take a crack at making something like this and show off how one can build a relatively nice and functional darkroom spawner. So let's bounce over to the redstone testing world and we'll get cracking away at it. Alright guys, now we're back in my redstone testing world as you can see from the multitude of builds that I have made attempts to make work, etc. Um, over here you can see this was the first attempt at trying to get his system to work until I realized what it was that I was doing wrong. And now that we got it fixed and going, this is uh, kind of just an eyesore at this point. Maybe someday I'll like, blow it up or something. Anyway, what we're going to do is bounce off over here and we'll pick this as a good spot here. And we need a four by four section to denote where our kill chamber is going to be and where we're going to want to basically center our platform to. Now there's a number of ways you could do this. Um, on Kerms we had a platform that stuck, you know, encased basically a big cube around the farm and the outer section had shelves on it which also dispensed water drop them to a much lower level which was just nothing but water pushing them all to the center here which they fell down and died other ways you could kill them would be to use magma blocks and of course you could just leave them uh, here you can just have them fall down onto this and say a creeper fell in there then you would get your drops this way. Might take a little while and probably not going to work overly well against witches, so um, personally they, they need to drop a long way for them to die. And in order to get the items picked up from here, you'd either have to use a dispenser pusher with water and funnel it all off to the side, or you can use a hopper mine cart underneath. Um, personally, it's just as easy to uh, I'll go ahead and get rid of these here. It's just as easy to have them fall to their death, get picked up by hoppers, and uh, have a lava layer there just in case you know something happens to survive the fall, which you never know. They may spawn in with feather falling four or something crazy. But anyway, now that we have this section built, we'll start working towards getting the actual farm going. So what we'll do is we'll pretend that uh, this level here is where we're going to start putting dispensers. So, 
There we go. Throw these around here. And then we can break the corner pieces here, like so. We can drop in the dispensers. Now what we're going to want to do is take this three high. And here in a second, I will show you why. All right, so we need to take and place blocks out like this seven long. We, of course, need to do that. Oops. Apologies, got something in my eye here. We need to do that all the way across here, like so. And then again, we need a seven. And we basically are just going to do this around like so for each side of this particular farm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, once you have all four sides completed, such as this, then you need to basically you're going to do something similar like we did in the middle here. We're just going to bounce along six blocks and just keep reducing it like so. And we do that around on all the corners here. Which doesn't take very long, thankfully. So now that you have your first platform put in, and this is the lower level, and then somewhere down here, of course, we're going to have, you know, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which this would mirror all the way around. And then, of course, you need a step up and blah, blah, blah. So you have a platform pushing the mobs in towards the... Uh, central pillar there. We're not going to worry too much about that. That's something that you can figure out if that's how you want to do it. Um, the next step is we need to put in a couple of server, uh, a couple of observers. Get the words out. Uh, if you haven't played with an observer, basically, uh, as you saw there, it offered a one cl uh, quick flash, which is your output here. I'm using the faithful um, resource pack so this is going to look a little different than if you're not use, utilizing any form of resource packs so this will actually have some sort of a weird looking robot face which is actually kind of cool I kind of wish they'd fix this but anytime let's see anytime this detects a change what, what am I looking for redstone dust and wooden trap door just annoy you a little bit here Anytime this detects a change in the front of it, it automatically pulses out the back side. Now this works on water levels, um, blocks, things of that nature. 
didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. We got this. We can get this fixed. All right, so go ahead and get rid of these things. For the observers, we need to do this and nope. It's really hard to do. Technically, you need to do this from down below. And you heard that click there. Let's see if we can get up in here. Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay, and we'll throw this back there. And that. One more time. And there's that. So, if we take and copy in a water bucket to all four, all right, um, the next bit here, now I'm just going to make a simple little system to pulse the blocks here. guess that would have been much easier. That's okay. Go ahead and grab ourselves some sticky pistons, a lever, and some redstone dust. Flip this around like so. Drop that in back behind it. Same thing here. Oops, get a little closer to this angle. And there we go. So in order to make this work, we will run a line like that. Now, honest, obviously, you're going to want some form of timing system for it. I mean, it, it just makes sense. You don't want to be sitting there manually making this work. And there's a number of systems you can choose from. We'll uh, may talk about them later in another episode. But this is basically just trying to get you going on a mob farm. And there you have it. This is one floor of a system that you can literally just start putting in more levels of. I'm just going to make a big old mess here. Obviously, we do not want to leave the water in. This is the water is technically the very last thing that you want to put into the system, mostly because as you're working, you are definitely going to pulse these guys. So, what we can do is do that, and we can throw down some more blocks. All right, and now that you got a platform to work off of, it's a little easier getting these things laid out and getting started on the next section. And while you're down here, you can basically do this, and you hear the double click. You're basically pulsing the top one, which changes its... Uh, data it updates the block which then updates these observers which then updates the block and it basically just <clears throat> excuse me it just basically chains the uh, redstone <clears throat> through the blocks now I will go through and build a few more of these and I will catch you guys in a few uh, seconds to show you how the system works with more than one level alright guys I'm back and as you can see we have Three platforms now all working with a dispenser, two observers, and them falling down, not quite to their death, but hey. Um, and this basically just goes all the way up like that with a dispenser, two observers, a dispenser above, two observers, 
all the way up here to the top where I made a slight change to the timer system that it utilizes. There is currently a stack of redstone dust in here that powers a standard hopper clock. Um, basically, the fewer the items that are in this hopper here, the weaker this output's going to be. That goes to this repeater, which powers all the pistons, which updates the observers, which you can't really see, but they're there. See? Right there. And if we take a step off over here, as you can see, we've already spawned a couple baddies in here. Wait for the water to pop down. Eventually. You can, of course, adjust this timing to suit whatever need you're shooting for. Looks like, yep, there they go. We'll back up just a little bit, see if we can't get some spawns going in. See, they're already popping in. This is a fairly efficient farm. Um, one of the key things that you have to be aware of, of course, is the fact that um, any place that you're going to build this, you need to make sure all of your caves are lit up, or obviously the best place to do it is going to be out in the middle of the ocean. Um, and the lower the level, the Y level that you go, and the better you actually are, are going to be able to get in spawns. Um, has something to do with the way Minecraft calculates spawning for mobs. It starts at the lowest point and starts working its way back up the map. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is my little uh, tutorial on this. I actually took this from a video of uh, Wells Knight did in an episode for his own and just kind of recreated it from our, our own purposes, but I thought I'd share it because it's an interesting build. It works well, and it upsets the Enderman quite nicely. But, uh, yeah. Uh, any way you want to set up for killing, I'll leave that up to you there. As I said at the beginning, there's a number of ways you can set this up to your needs. It just kind of depends on the resources you have at hand. So... I appreciate if you watched all the way through this and hopefully you learned something. I, I'm happy to impart any more knowledge that I happen to gain. If you happen to have any questions, please bug me here in the description. And I will do my best to um, take care of whatever thoughts or questions you might have. Um, if you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate a subscription. Up to you on that, and I post everything that I do to Twitter, whether it's streams, uh, the videos themselves that get posted, so you can catch me on there as well. Until next time, guys, happy Minecrafting.